What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. So I've had a lot of people ask me about math. How much math do I need to know to become a developer or to have a successful career as a software engineer? And I'm gonna answer it in this video. Should be a pretty quick one because I think the answer is pretty simple. So most of us here are at least high school graduates. We've had years of math, basic math, and we've had pre-algebra, algebra, maybe algebra two, geometry, calculus, all of those things. And many of us have moved on to more advanced math. But the question is, is that enough to have a successful career as a software engineer? How much do you actually need to know? So just a disclosure here, I am horrible at math. I did high school and college, but math was never my strength. I just kind of pushed through it. In fact, I was trying to help my daughter on her homework the other day. She was multiplying decimals together. I actually had to sneak out of the room and Google how to do it just so I could come back and help her out. I'm not a math guy, but I've had a successful career as a software engineer for five years now, and I don't think even one time I've been hung up on a math-related problem. It just doesn't happen. And actually, I feel pretty confident about my developer skills these days, even though my math skills lack. And here's why. When it comes to math in software engineering, there's really two camps that you fall into. There's the web developer or the app developer, even cloud engineer. That's one camp. And then there's the camp that I like to call the number crunchers. So there's two camps here. I fall into this first one. I'm a software developer. And when I'm not writing code, I'm writing automation in some DevOps kind of way. But I fall in this web developer, app developer category. And in this category, you don't have to know a lot of math. Instead, you have to be logical. You have to have a logical brain. You have to be an if else person. You have to be able to pseudocode. You have to be able to look up documentation and tweak things to make your program work. And to me, that takes a lot of logic. It doesn't take a lot of math. Why? Because the computer and the code do the math for you. Now, years ago, before I was a programmer, I thought programmers were very skilled at math. Like they had to do all of these calculations to make the program run. And while that might have been true then, it's not so much now. Our computers do the math, our code does the math. We have to be logical because our computer's not gonna be logical and our code's not gonna be logical until we tell it how to do it. So if you feel good in these categories, you're logical, you're a problem solver, then you'll do well with basic math. It won't impede your ability to grow at all or learn to program at all. And if you feel a little deficient with algorithms and logic and things like that, then I'm gonna tell you about a resource at the end of this video that would be really helpful for you. Now the second group out there, the group that I call the number crunchers, do need to know a lot of math. They have to be math people. And if you're not strong in math, you won't do well in this category without some work. Now this category consists of data scientists, um, AI and machine learning engineers, robotics, things like this. It's taking data and probability and statistics and algorithms and predicting outcomes or telling stories or coming to some conclusions or making something work precisely. This is the path that requires all of the math. So if you're looking to become a data scientist or a machine learning engineer, then yes, you will have to know a lot of math. And if you don't, then you'll have to level up. Now, how could you level up in math and computer science fundamentals and logic and all of that? Well, check this resource out. So a while back, I published a video on YouTube kind of sharing some of my struggles of not having a computer science degree in this field. And since then, I learned of a resource that actually fills those voids of not having the math and the logic and the skills that you would get in a four-year degree for a tiny fraction of the cost. And no, it's not a boring book. It's not college lectures. It's a website called Brilliant. And the brilliancy here is that you can learn these skills while you're learning to code or even to supplement your skills while in a thriving coding career. As you know, companies are no longer requiring CS degrees. You just have to prove yourself. You just need to come up to speed on computer science fundamentals and algorithm fundamentals, both of which are taught on Brilliant. The learning is interactive, it's fun, and the courses are created by award-winning teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, and Google. And if you're not in that number cruncher category and instead are in the app website category, 
then you might benefit from the algorithm fundamentals course, the computer science fundamentals course, or even the logic course. And if you're in the number cruncher category, you may want to check out the probability statistics course or the calculus or the algebra courses. And if you're a software engineer just looking to stay sharp, there's plenty of interactive fun for you as well. So do you have to know math to be a developer? Yes. How much? Well, very little for the app web developer and a lot for the data scientist. I hope that helps. Don't go back to school to fill these voids. If you're past schooling age, it's just too much money. Use something like Brilliant to fill the gaps instead. If I can do it with a lingering math deficiency, you can as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.